straight for the third, fourth time, as we said. I think Bo Beaton will be having another look at the inside as they head down to Motel Corner. And the other interesting thing is that uh, what would be going through Bo Beaton's mind at the moment, a, a guy, in all fairness, uh, doesn't have a lot of road racing experience. He's racing against Mr. Superbike, oh. and he's just overtaken him around the outside. All, a little bit hot into there from uh, Beaton. May, may have even got a touch from Robbie Phyllis as he uh, cut his nose <laughs> off. A bloody nose for uh, Robbie Phyllis there, so he's taken the nice inside line into Siberia. Beaton tries to go around the outside again, and uh, <laughs> there's, there's Scotty Webster on bike number 75. Coming through, there's Jason Patterson on 66, goes in too deep at turn four. Albert De Hennepe takes uh, over uh, the 66 machine of, uh, of Pado, but at the front, it is Robbie Phillips versus Bo Beaton in a two-man war. I like the way that Bo Beaton thought, well, you won't give me the inside line, I'll just try around the outside again. Anything's possible with you. As what we see, uh, Bo Beaton coming right, up, having another dig at MG Corner, short shifting from second to third, Mon Mon little mono from Robbie Phillips, but look at the drive from Bo Beaton on this immaculate Irving Vincent up the inside again. Second time he's pulled that move off in four laps, pushes Robbie Phillips wide. Robbie Phyllis will just slip into the slipstream and hopefully you can dra out drag him down the straight. Four down, two to go. Side by side as they cross the line. <laughs> Having a good look. He's probably saying, what are you doing, you young bloke? There's no way that you should be doing this to me. Don't you know I own the historics? But how was the drive out of turn 11 from the uh, the Irving Vincent there of Bo Beaton? That was very impressive. Robbie Phyllis is not sly on the throttle. That thing just drove past him. And uh, Robbie Phyllis made up for it with a great run onto the, uh, the Gardner Strait here at Phillip Island. Managed to uh, have a look at Bo Beaton as he went past. But down round through Southern Loop now. Braxy, look at the corner speed oh. of Beaton on that Vincent. He comes, <laughs> tries to go around the outside of Robbie Phyllis again. Phyllis drifts right to the outside of the circuit. Bo Beaton now tucks in through turn four. Fast, one of the fastest parts of the track. And they've got a back marker as they come up to negotiate turn four now. Just having a look further back in the pack, oh. it looks like Scotty Webster has got the better of, uh, of Laurie Fife, who slipped back to fifth place now. Michael Dibbs up to fourth on the CBX six-cylinder. And I think that uh, those riders are just oh. coming into turn four now. It is Dibsy that leads Scotty Webster and Laurie Fife back to fifth place. They're about separated by a distance, uh, about half the distance of Michael Libs' wheel, uh, Michael Libs' wheelbase. <laughs> exactly. That was a great move into a modal corner for the fifth time. But that at the front, Robbie Phyllis, he looks like he's got about a five or six bike length lead over the Irving Vincent. But I think Bo Beaton might have made a mistake that we didn't see on screen was we were concentrating on Scott, Scott Webster on that immaculate Moto Martin, Michael Dibb on the CBX 1000 and Laurie Fife on the Suzuki who's back on the AOR timing sheets at the moment. Now look at the drive fill as uh, Bo Beaton gets his Irving Vincent wound up. Closing right up on Robbie Phyllis. We'll see what drive he can get through turn 11 as they get the last lap board at the end of this one. Yeah. Oh. But what the interesting thing was then, Braxy, he was a fair way behind, managed to get great drive. He's now in a good position to take advantage of the slipstream of uh, Robbie Phyllis. And uh, could this be a practice run for the Aaron Slight manoeuvre onto the last <laughs> lap? That's you the question that's got to be asked here at Phillip Island. You never know. That uh, goes back a ways, that one. The, uh, he's, I think that was a tear-off. He's dropped off a bit. Now, look at this. Scotty oh, Webster being he... pushed into the wall by Michael Dibb. I don't think he realised he was there. That wasn't a dirty move. He was just trying to get the line into turn one. But Scotty Webster doesn't slow him down. Michael Dibb again up the inside into Dewan Corner. Great move. Ah, oh, these three will be battling out to the flag as well as uh, Laurie Fies had tries around the outside, but not enough room there. Now, you watch the drive from the Moto Martin as they come out of Southern Loop for the final time down the big charge in the modal corner, the big hairpin. Oh, talking about the hairpin, look at this. They're side by side. Bo Beaton, he's, you're not meant to do that, son, around the outside, but he almost makes it oh. stick. Oh, he does. <laughs> Bashing each other, elbowing each other, kneeing each other out of the way. Now the battle for third, fourth and fifth. Oh. No room there for Laurie Fife to come up the inside. Discretion, a better part of Valor. Michael Dibb in third spot. Uh, which, well, where do you look, Phil? Well, the, the, <laughs> the loose cannon had his barrel well and truly bent over there. As they come through the hay shed, Phil is back up the inside of Bo Beaton. And uh, this is one of two fantastic battles for the top five positions. Oh. Beaton goes wide across the top of Lukey Braxy. Down into MG, <laughs> he gets a fantastic run. He's got the inside line, and Robbie Phyllis has been put out the pasture on the outside. Yeah, and I reckon he'll put uh, Bo Beaton out the pasture coming through turn 12 and onto the straight with a slipstream. You watch the drive from Robbie Phyllis, but Bo Beaton, he couldn't get any further underneath the tank unless he threw it away. He's under the paint as he comes on, sweeping onto the Gardner straight for the final time as this opening ca Glenn Cameron Australia in historics, the lap is in the way as well. We're looking for the rest of them. He's trying to weave his way, thread the needle. Bo Beaton takes the win from Robbie Phyllis. What a great race. Now we'll see if we can get the cameras back. 
on Michael Dibb, Scotty Webster and Laurie Five. Bo Beaton, well done, son. That's the start of a future champion there. As they come onto the line, it is Scotty Webster on the Moto Martin, out dragging. Oh. Where's Michael Dibb? He got shuffled out backwards there. Uh, his lorry five got him, so I think uh, young yeah. Dibb he, uh, did something wrong there. He won't be a happy chappy, I'd say, Michael Dibb. He thought he might have had third spot, but Phil Harlan, what a way to start the weekend's proceedings of the racings. You couldn't ask for any closer rate or more entertaining closer racing than that, and the times they're doing are 45s and 46s. Better ask this. you a question, honestly, Braxy. Would you have expected anything less? <laughs> no, not after what we've seen in uh, the last couple of years at Phillip Island. Uh, and uh, certainly you wouldn't have expected uh, Bo Beaton to uh, hop on that machine and uh, go so well, unless you'd had the advantage that we have of watching him all year. Certainly, uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely fantastic yeah. performance from the young rider. And uh, I'd say that Robbie Phyllis is uh, more than happy to have another challenger at the head and uh, making the racing just as exciting. But what a great performance too from Laurie Fife and, uh, and also Scotty Webster. Yeah. He's a <laughs> Bo Beaton wants to do a victory lap. There he is. Look at the smile on his face. It's bigger than the visor gap that he's got. It's bigger than the capacity of that Vincent. <laughs> well, like you said, jumping on that Irving Vincent for the first time this weekend, he qualified in uh, on sixth position, and it was, we couldn't take any bearing on that because of the atrocious conditions they actually practised and qualified in this morning at about half past eight or whatever time it was. But... Uh, and you just got to put your hands together for that. What a great way, to, as I said, great way to start the weekend's proceedings of racing. Certainly is. And uh, to let us get our breath back, we might head off to a quick break before we get ready for the next race.